Okay, so in this video, we're going to find the domain of this function right here. So we have the function f of x is equal to 1 over x times the square root of x plus 1. And what we want to do, of course, is to find the domain of this particular function. So how strong is your algebra skills? Well, if you have strong algebra skills, then you should be able to answer this question because uh, knowing about functions is going to be uh, critical to your success in algebra. Functions are everywhere in mathematics, so you need to know a lot about functions. Uh, of course, to know what the domain is, the range is, you know, one-to-one -one functions, function inverses, function operations. I can go on and on and on. So, um, you know, again, Function is a huge topic in algebra, and being able to um, uh, define or find the domain of particular functions is something you're definitely going to encounter. So again, if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answers in the comment section. I'm going to walk through exactly what we need to do here to find the domain in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you're struggling uh, in mathematics, well, I've been teaching math for decades. I like to think of myself as actually explaining math in super clear and understandable ways. So I can definitely help you out. If you're at the middle school, uh, high school, or even college level, definitely check out my math help program if you're struggling in mathematics. Now, um, if you happen to be preparing for any kind of test that has a math section on it, uh, many of you out there... Um, will be taking a test like this or be taking a test something like this in your future. So I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, college placement exams like the Alex exam, uh, CLEP exam, AccuPlacer, maybe a teacher certification exam, wide variety of exams out there that people have to take with a math section on it. I can definitely help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I was just recently voted number one for middle and high school mathematics uh, by a major homeschool publication. Pretty excited about uh, that award. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, we're going to talk about the domain of this function here. Okay, so before we actually start, let's just make sure we know what this word means. Now, let me be a little bit more precise about the problem. Okay, I want to know the domain of this function with respect to the real numbers. So that's a little technical uh, detail that's actually very important. So if some of you are wondering about that, yes, I'm looking for the domain with respect to the real numbers. Okay, so... Let's take a look at this word domain. What does that mean to you? Okay, we're talking about functions here. You should have a, you know, some sort of sense of what that means or what the uh, word, uh, uh, what the domain is of a function. If not, you're just going to be blindly doing this problem. You're like, oh, here's the answer, but I don't really understand what it means. Well, let's talk about what the domain means. So the domain effectively is the allowable set of input uh, values you can plug in to a function. Okay, so here's all the uh, input values I'm allowed to plug in this particular function. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, can I just plug in any value into a function? Like, you know, I could just think of anything, f of 17. Maybe I want to find f of negative uh, 5. Well, for the most part, you know, you should be able to put in you know, all sorts of values into a particular function, but we do have restrictions, okay? From time to time, there are some things, especially when we're talking about uh, uh, functions with respect to the real numbers, there's two primary conditions that we cannot have, okay? So let me go ahead and show you them here. We can't have a, a situation where we get zero in the denominator. This is not allowed, okay? We also can't um, have a value such that we end up with a negative underneath a square root, okay? So what I'm talking about, you can't end up with like a negative 27, okay? We're talking about the real numbers again. This is not allowed, and you can't have something like uh, 8 over 0. This is never allowed in mathematics. So if we have a particular input value that we plug into our, our function, that causes this condition or this condition, those particular um, values, we have to eliminate them, okay? They're not allowed to be on our team to be part of the domain, if you will. So we have to um, check for those conditions, okay? When is it, or uh, is there a, a values, okay? A value or values or a range of values that would cause this condition or this condition. So 
that's what you're looking for when you're looking to uh, find the domain with respect to the real numbers. And then, of course, we're going to have to express this in a couple different ways. So if this was a bit of a hint for you, like, oh, okay, I understand what to do now, then pause the video and see how far you can take this problem. Okay, I'm kind of already giving you kind of the big picture in terms of how to answer this question. Don't worry about exactly how you express the domain. Uh, the, uh, there's various different set notation, um, but I'll kind of show you a couple different ways here. I just want you to think through here, okay? What values of this and this, such that we, if we plugged it into the function, would cause this condition or this condition? All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. And uh, so the first thing is this, okay? So we're focused on the denominator. So the denominator, this whole denominator can never be zero. Okay. All right. But when is the denominator zero? So we'll, let's find that value. Okay. Or th those values. So clearly if this X right here was equal to zero. Okay. Well, that would be zero times this. That would cause your de our whole denominator to be zero. Okay. So that's one value that we're going to have to keep our uh, eye on. And then if we look underneath the square root here, if X plus one, okay. If this is zero in and of itself, so x plus one, one is at zero when x is negative one. Okay, so if I have negative one for this x right there, I would get negative one plus one. Of course, that's zero. Square root of zero, zero. So zero times whatever this is is going to cause a zero. So right off the bat, I have two values that, two values of x that could cause a zero uh, in the denominator. So this is our first condition. Uh, that we're, we're going to need to uh, kind of explore here in a second that it's going to affect what the domain of this function is, okay? So x is 0, x is equal to negative 1. Both of these uh, uh, situations will cause the denominator to be 0. Now, the other condition that uh, we want to be looking at is we have this square root right there, okay? So we have the square root of x plus 1. So remember, uh, we can't have, we can't take the square root of a negative number. So this here, okay, cannot be negative, meaning it has to be positive or zero, okay? It just can't be negative. So when is x plus 1, uh, when is it greater than or equal to zero? Well, I can just write myself a nice little inequality like this, x plus 1, and I'm kind of like asking a question, hey, x plus 1, when are you greater than or equal to zero? And I, I can solve this nice little inequality, just subtract 1 from both sides, and I have x is greater than or equal to negative one. Okay, so as long as my x my x's are greater than or equal to negative one, I will not have uh, I won't I will not be taking the square root of a negative value. Okay, so this is a condition I need to look at, and then uh, these other values over here are um, uh, additional conditions I need to be thinking about uh, to remember avoid having zero in the denominator or a negative underneath a square root. So you can have both of those conditions in a function like we have here, but uh, how do we put this all together? Well, let's go down and show you how we can do this. So a good way of doing this is just to draw a number line, okay? And now let's think about these first two values we had. We had x is 0 and x is negative 1. These are values that we do not want to have, okay? So we want to avoid x being 0, so we'll uh, kind of uh, be more explicit about that. We're going to say x, we do not, we cannot be equal to 0, and then x cannot be equal to negative 1. So let's uh, plot these points on the number line. So we have negative 1 and 0, and to uh, establish that we do not want our, um, our domain to be these values, I'm going to leave this as an open circle, okay? So at negative 1, I'm going to leave that open. An open circle means that uh, it does not include that particular value. Okay, so it's not going to be equal to negative 1 or equal to 0. Okay, and then over here we have this other condition. It says x, all our x's have to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay, so greater than or equal to negative 1, normally that would be like a closed circle. And if you don't know what I'm doing here, you need to review inequalities. Okay, and all these values indicate... Um, all x's that are greater than or equal to negative 1. But again, uh, this is uh, not considering these other conditions over here. Okay, so this is not really what's going on. So really what's going on is, hey, all x's that are greater than or equal to negative 1, but of course, 
this uh, we can't have negative one or zero so all these numbers are fine and then all these additional values right here are fine as well so our domain our domain ends up being all these sets right here okay the set of values between negative one and zero but not including negative one and zero and then all values greater than zero okay off uh, into infinity this would be um, the set of values we would um, define as the domain of this particular function. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually write this now. So there's a couple different ways we can do it. You can just put like a big D here for domain, and let's use um, some basic inequality um, uh, notation to define this here. So all x's that are greater than negative 1, but not including, okay, and less than 0. And then we could just put a comma, all x's that are greater than uh, zero. Okay, and then we could just say x is an element or part of the real number set, and that would be uh, uh, perfectly fine to uh, define the domain like that. Now, if you're using something called interval notation, okay, and you should learn interval uh, interval notation. I'm actually going to be posting a video along with this video when I uh, post this on YouTube about interval notation. You can write the same uh, sets like this okay so it would be parenthesis negative one uh, comma zero so that defines this uh, um, set of values okay that range right there and then that's going to be union with zero to positive infinity so if you're not familiar with this uh, uh, type of notation you should get familiar with it this is um, used in uh, a little bit more advanced mathematics you know things that definitely algebra 2 and beyond maybe college algebra certainly pre-calculus and definitely calculus so this is really how you're going to see how uh, most uh, uh, sets and uh, intervals uh, define using interval or set notation like this okay so if you're familiar with this this means uh, they're basically being the same thing but again the domain of this function is all these values not including negative one not including zero and then all values greater than zero Okay, so how did you do? Did you understand everything in this particular video? If that is the case, I must give you a good old 1980, well, not 18, 1887. Uh, I was putting 1987. See, um, I'm not sure if they had Mohawks back in uh, 1897, but if they did, that was pretty cool. But I'm going to go ahead and just give you a nice little uh, Mohawk because that was cool back in 1987. I didn't wear a Mohawk here. Uh, haircut. I'm glad I didn't because I'm, there's no pictures that have, of me exist like that. But listen, that was cool back then. And it's cool today if you've got this uh, problem right and you understand about functions, domain, and all these uh, various conditions. Of course, you know, um, this is only one problem. You want to go ahead and practice this stuff, you know, um, a lot. And there's more that you need to know about functions, okay? Func uh, you need to know about domain, range, again, inverse functions, one-to-one -one functions, uh, vertical line test, um, you know, uh, inverse functions, uh, composite functions, function operations. You know, uh, you know, when you see this notation or you hear this word functions in math, it's everywhere. It actually means something. OK, there's a very specific definition behind that. And again, finding the domain of functions is a uh, type of question that you're going to encounter uh, pretty frequently. So if this video helped you out in some small way, consider helping me uh, out by smashing that like button. That would be pretty awesome. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll uh, consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over 1,000 plus math videos, basic math to advanced math like uh, calculus and everything in between. So uh, please take advantage of my um, videos if you like my teaching style, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.